Welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to apply properties of rational exponents. <clears throat> uh, so let's get started. Okay, so here are the properties of the rational exponents. I'm not going to go through this again with you. We have already gone through these properties in a prior lesson. Uh, now we're going to apply them again in the problems that we're going to take a look at in the next couple of sections. All right, so uh, just briefly, product of the powers, power of the powers, power of the product, negative exponent, zero exponent, quotient of powers, and power of the quotient. So you should keep this uh, set of information handy when you walk through or handle uh, the properties and expressions using rational exponents. Uh, and you could laminate this, write it down, you can uh, print this, but remember, you should remember each of these properties so that you're familiar with them and you can handle rational exponents quickly. All right, properties of rational and radical exponents. <clears throat> so I say a to the m over n. If I convert that between rational exponent and radical exponent form, and we've already really reviewed this, I go from a to the m, the power of m, over n. That's the same as the nth root of a to the m. And if I had an example 4 to the 3 halves, I would rewrite that as the square root of 4 all taken to the third power. So the numerator is the power that you're taking the value to, and the 2 is the index, um, and you're taking that to whatever root uh, it's indicated as. So this would be to the square root of 4 taken to the third power. When we see a negative value as part of the exponent, we know that it doesn't create this base value uh, to be an opposite value of what it is or a negative value of what it is. We're just uh, placing that value uh, underneath the 1. So it would be 1 over a to the m divided by n. Okay, And it still holds the properties uh, between rational and radical exponent form still hold. I could rewrite that as a to the nth root all taken to the m power. And the example I give here is 5 to the negative 3 divided by 2. That's the same as 1 over the square root of 5 taken to the third power. Okay, let's talk about properties of radicals, and this should be reviewed for you. I have the square root, I'm sorry, the nth root of a times b is equal to the nth root of a times the nth root of b. So if I said, what's the square root of uh, 81? That would be the same as the square root of 9 times the square root of 9. So I can separate out the factors and simplify those factors as part of the simplification process if I wanted to. Index remains the same. Same holds true for, so remember, when you're multiplying these together, index has to be the same. Um, and again, this is review for you. So the quotient property of radicals says uh, something very similar to the product property of radicals. Um, I can combine the numerator and denominator um, under one radical sign, um, or I can separate the numerator and denominator out uh, as long as they have the same index. So if I said, what is the square root of 81 over 9? That's the same as what's the square root of 81 over what's the square root of 9. That would give me 9 over 3, and that should equal 3. So product property of radicals, quotient property of radicals. Always remember that when you're multiplying these together, that the index has to be the same. The base of the radicand values do not. Okay, when we talk about, and again, this should be a review for you. When we have simplest term, there are two requirements. One is that the radicand has no perfect nth powers as factors. So if you convert back and forth between rational and radical notation, then you want to make sure that you remove any factors uh, that have nth powers, perfect nth powers. So in this case, I have 8, uh, which is I can extract a perfect cube, and my result would be 2. If I had the cube root of 16, I could use my product property of radicals to separate these values out into the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 2. Cube root of 8 is 2, so that would leave me with 2 times the cube root of 2. Second is the denominators need to be rationalized, which means we can't have a radical in the exponent, or I cannot have a fraction um, as an exponent. So I can't have a radical in the denominator. <clears throat> so if I had something like this, this 1 over the square root of 2, I would need to rationalize uh, this expression in order to eliminate the radical in the denominator. Additionally, if I had a fractional exponent, I would need to multiply both the numerator and denominator by a value that gives me a whole number or an integer 
as an exponent in this case it's going to be 8 to the 2 thirds so I'd end up with 8 to the 2 thirds over 8 to the 3 thirds or just 8. Okay so two requirements I have to remove um, any perfect nth powers from uh, the radicand radicals uh, in the denominator need to be uh, removed or if I have fractional exponents those need to be uh, reduced or simplified to uh, an integer exponent. Okay, when we're adding and subtracting radicals, radicals can be added or subtracted when they are like radicals. Well, what's a like radical? A like radical is a radical that has the same radicand and the same index. So in this case, the second case, I cannot add these two together because the although the radicand is the same, the index is not. In the first case, I can add the two together because both the radicand and the index are the same. So 3 to the 4th through to 16 plus uh, 4 to the 4th through to 16 is equal to 7 to the 4th root of 16. All right, multiplying and dividing radicals. I can multiply and divide uh, radicals together um, in three different cases. One is the radicand is the same, one is where the index is the same, and one is where the, both the radicand and the index are the same. In this case, the radicand is the same. I have 16 and 16. And what I'm going to do is I'm going, those are both the values for the radicand. I'm going to convert to rational notation. And then I'm going to use the product of the powers property. And in this case, I just add the exponent. So when I'm multiplying radicals or values in rational notation, all I do is I keep the base the same or the radicand the same, uh, place the proper exponent value, <clears throat> keep the base the same, and then just add the exponent values. Okay, the other possibility is when the index is the same. When the index is the same, <clears throat> but the radicand is different, I can still multiply them together. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the radicand values together. And I'm also going to multiply the coefficients separately. So what happens is I end up with 7 times the cube root of 16 times 8, or the cube root of 128. And from there, I can simplify. I have a perfect uh, cube root in uh, 64, and that's going to be 4. So I end up, so the cube root of 64 would be equal to 4. And I can separate, use the product property of radicals. I can separate that out into the cube root of 64 times the cube root of 2. Cube root of 64 gives me 4. And now I'm left with 7 times 4 times the cube root of 2, or 28 times the cube root of 2. OK, one more example. I can multiply and divide radicals when the index and the radicand are the same. First step is going to be to multiply the radicands and the coefficients, again, separately. So I multiply 16 times 16. So I have the fourth root of 256. I multiply 7 and 7. I have 49. And then I go ahead and simplify. Uh, the cube root, you'll figure this out over time. The cube root of, I'm sorry, the fourth root of 256 is going to end up being 4. So after you've simplified uh, the radical, I can multiply now 49 times 4 to give me 196. So there are three possibilities. One is where the radicand is the same. I just add the index values. Second is when the index is the same. I multiply now the radicands and I keep the index the same and then I simplify. And the last possibility is when both the index and the radicand are the same. I, what I typically will do is just keep the index the same, multiply the radicand values, multiply the coefficient separately, and then simplify from there. So let's just be cautious. When I multiply the square root of something times itself, I end up with 16. But when I have a, an index that's different than 2, be careful because the 4th root of 16 times the 4th root of 16 does not equal 16, but it equals 4. So the 4th root of 16 is 2 times 2. That's going to be equal to 4, not equal to 16. So just be careful um, as you go through the process of multiplying radicals with the same exponent and the same radicand together. They might, well, actually they will turn out uh, differently than when you multiply the square root of that radicand times the square root of that radicand together. Right, come and join us for some practice problems in uh, applying properties of rational exponents on Otten Math.